today, I've got 17 years sobriety behind me because when I get drunk. Good evening, Australia. Welcome to the show. Tough times never last, but tough people do. I'm Michael Kozilny. We've done the show for about 10 years and some uh, beautiful, authentic and wonderful people on the couch. Um, it seems to be a very pretentious world, you know, everybody tells you what you want to hear. But um, Paul Robson's on the couch tonight. He's a terrific fella, a really, really decent human being and successful human being. 30 years in the Victoria Police Force, went all the way up to acting uh, detective senior sergeant. Uh, and I th think we were in the academy at the same time. Robbo, um, thanks for coming on. No, thank you. Now, God, time flies, doesn't it? So, look, to be honest, sitting here now, it yeah. seems like yes, it seems like we could go and get a kit and get back on the van. Yeah. I've got a memory like a sieve, but I think squad 14 of 86 and 28th of July 1986, I either went in or graduated. I, I was uh, the 15th of September 86. Right. And I went through to the 15th of September last year, 2016. Isn't it amazing? And then we worked at St Kilda together. We were, yeah. I was at St Kilda for the best part of five years. Yeah. And uh, in those days, that was a tough place, yeah. as you know. And uh, there were some tough men. And uh, some of them were the coppers and some weren't. And we did it hard. Uh, we worked hard. And we played hard. I always remember you were a very, very first-class operator, you know. I always knew that you were going to uh, climb the ranks of um, uh, in the police force. Oh, look... I always wanted to go uh, to the CIB. I, was, I always wanted to be a detective. And uh, I succeeded in doing that because of the work at St Kilda mm. uh, and ended up a detective at Sunshine. And uh, I was there for a number of years and uh, for, for no real reason, I guess, other than uh, the work was very drug-related, I went to Footscray CIB mm -hmm. from there and did a number of years there. Um, and it was whilst I was at Footscray CIB that I realised that uh, things were getting on top of me in a lot of ways. Um, I'd spent some time at, at the Western Suburbs Sex Offenders Unit. Mm. And uh, look, I thoroughly enjoyed all of the work that I did as a detective. And the people that I worked with were sensational. Uh, the best police officers I ever worked with uh, and I don't say this lightly after 30 years of... Uh, look, 28 years of my 30 years was operational. Um, I, I spent 28 years on the street. And uh, the best year, the best copper I ever worked with was a detective senior constable at, uh, at Sunshine who unfortunately had a breakdown and, and, and she left the police force. Mm. And to this day... No one has surpassed her as being the best detective and the best policewoman and the best police officer that I ever worked with. And I learnt more from her than I have from anyone. Unfortunately for me, I guess I didn't pick up on the, the signs that I saw in her appearing in myself. Mm. And I resorted to the drink. Um, I was never one, even at St Kilda, for going around to the balaclava and getting on the drink too much. Isn't that amazing? And I'll just stop you there, and folks, <coughs> and, and, and when I was in the police force, um, drink was a big part of the job, you know, and, and what would happen, you'd work a night shift and then uh, you'd have your early openers and, um, you know, you'd be there at 7 o'clock in the morning after night shift and, and you'd leave at 3 p.m., um, jump in your car, and the whole crew would uh, uh, drive home probably at point one or point one five, you know. It's a regular thing. And um, as a young bloke, you'd sort of join that crew. And um, I remember one time I said, I've got, I want to go to the gym. They said, you better stay. Um, but the pubs would, you know, drop off um, uh, slabs of beer. It was just a drinking culture. And I don't think we even charged too many drink drivers in those days, did we? I don't think... Uh from my perspective, no. drink driving was a big offence. Uh, I was more drug orientated. Yeah. Um, and as you know, um, heroin, heroin, heroin was the scourge of our society. Heroin now is like Smarties compared to ice. 
and yeah. uh, it's <coughs> it's ice is just I've never seen anything like it. Robbo, what, about the grog, what I was going to say, I, I, you know, I used to go to the gym all the time and uh, da, da, it was the police force that sort of uh, induced me to uh, to drink or, or oh, yeah. you know, it, it was a drinking culture. You couldn't really uh, not drink, you know. It was, it it was, was quite, expected. It was quite appalling, you know, especially if you worked with a sergeant who was a huge drinker because you'd be doing those seven-hour sessions. Um, those That, of course, has changed. But uh, tell me how you then sort of... I suppose as a detective, uh, in those days, you had all the grog in the fridge. Look, I, I, I spent years drinking myself into uh, oblivion, and I've never made any uh, bones about it. No. I was drinking three to four slabs of beer a week, two bottles of vodka, and two five-litre casks of wine. And uh, I don't for a minute condone or try to condone my behaviour, uh, my behaviour wasn't that of a, a violent person. Um, I was incompetent and useless. Um, all I did was drink, and I would drink to a blackout state most nights. Um, I didn't have a night off the grog in many, many years, um, and I didn't have a, a day, basically. Um, I left the CIB for an acting sergeant's role at Werribee, which suited me because I could then drive from Werribee to Geelong, where I was then living, and uh, I could drink six cans between Werribee and, and Geelong, and uh, that that wasn't a big task for me. Um, I eventually transferred up the bush, and while I was up the bush, my then wife, uh, we had two little girls, and. Uh, and I think she was pregnant with uh, the young man that's now my uh, my beautiful son. And uh, she appeared at the lounge room door with the two little girls and said she was leaving. And she'd had enough of the drink. And I, it was two days before my eldest daughter, who uh, is a, a beautiful 20-year-old daughter now, and uh, it was two days before her third birthday. And she said uh, she was leaving. I begged her to stay because I couldn't be without the kids. And I said that uh, I'll uh, I'll go to hospital. I'll go to the doctors. I'll do anything. We might talk about that after the next break, but thank you so much for sharing. It's a heartfelt story, and I, I really appreciate your authenticity. Um, don't go away. Uh, Paul Robson on the couch. He's a decent fella. Thank you very much for watching wherever you are in Australia. And if you're going through some difficult issues tonight, uh, remember um, everything's impermanent. All the good things never last and all the bad things can't last either. So if you're going through something at the moment and we all go through difficult times, just sometimes there's nothing to fix. Just go through it. Just go through it. You know, it might be very painful. It might be a week, it might be six months, it might be three years, but eventually there'll be... Um, Sunshine uh, after all that turbulence. A really nice fellow on the couch, um, Robbo. He's uh, very authentic and real and, and, and kind-hearted too. A beautiful human being who dedicated himself to the service of others. But then unfortunately, you know, the, in the police force um, with such big groups, there's not much support. And um, But he's happy again. Robbo, um, it's a very pretentious world. And, and, and that's what I always liked about you, such authenticity there's no masks you say it the way it is yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, I was, love that about you mate I was brought up by a uh, waterside worker yeah uh, my dad was a waterside he was a returned uh, sailor um, uh, he was in the occupation force in Japan mm. after the war and uh, my father and I were extremely close mm. he was a, uh, a copper and when I was a kid he was a waterside worker and uh, there was nothing to be pretentious about. We were never no. a rich family. Um, my mum worked uh, extremely hard and uh, my dad worked extremely hard. 
So, yeah, I've, there was no silver spoon. No. I remember you were, you were always a very good fighter because in, I remember there's always lots of blues and stuff. A lot of people couldn't hand, handle themselves. But I remember one time, um, I think on Night Shift, uh, I think six people um, attacked you, you know? Uh, but you, you handled yourself very well. Where did you uh, learn those? My dad um, was a boxer. Was he? Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have his height, but I had, his, I had a big build. Yeah. And uh, um, unfortunately... I've had six broken noses and I've had the bone taken out of the nose and uh, uh, I've, uh, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of hidings, but at the same time, I've uh, survived a lot of hidings too. I, I've never said in my 30 years I was an angel. No. Um, I've never tried to pretend I was an angel in the police force. At the same time, um, I've never done the wrong thing for the wrong reasons. No, no, I remember this guy, um, very good uh, and respectful, almost like the Four Seasons to the good people, you know. He, he wouldn't, um, like these days you get uh, some coppers, they pull over a grandmother and it's the same thing. State your full name and address and produ- produce your life. They can't differentiate between the real crooks and, and the good people. But it's Robo always very respectful towards the good people. But if you've got a crook who uh, raped a 74-year-old grandmother and stomped on her head 10 times, he would certainly give them, give them an attitude adjustment. And that's the only thing that works. Look at our soft police force at the moment and, and uh, all these people um, assaulting prison guards and you know, rec- you know, millions of dollars of worth, uh, willful damage and um, you know, all this garbage about chases that you know you can't pull them over and they just keep on going and then running into people it's um i don't think it's a, a strong police force anymore i mean i don't think i know it's, it's oh, they very, only just left exactly well you tell me is is it is it a strong police force no no in my it's look in my opinion no no um, in a lot of people's opinion well yeah in tell a lot me exactly of, what you think of it one of the last jobs that I did while I was I was in the position of a I was seconded to the Geelong CI as a detective sergeant. Uh, whilst I was a uniform sergeant there, I got seconded back in, and uh, we were I received a phone call from a detective uh, senior sergeant in the Northern Territory, to telling me about a uh, impending murder, and we had ten minutes notice. To be honest, it was a, if you pardon the expression, it was a balls up. The uh, person that they were going to kill wasn't the informer that had uh, caused the problem in the Northern Territory. They were going to kill the wrong person. And he rang and reported that he was going to be shot and that he'd seen the gun and described the person that was going to shoot him and described the location that we would find him. And he said oh, he had 10 minutes before he would be killed. Uh, with, with 10 minutes, you don't have time to do anything. I put together three senior constables, or three senior detectives, thankfully, that came with me. Three very, very good senior detectives. Uh, and probably three of the best in that office. We got to, to the, the scene probably with a couple of minutes to spare. Looked up the street and the, uh, the crook, was definitely seated in the front seat of his car and the car was as described but the front of the car was up against a small cyclone school fence uh, primary school and uh, we said that they put the ballistic vests on with police on the front he looks in the rear view mirror then he jumps the fence and he's in a school with a with a handgun so we couldn't take the risk so we went as we were the four of us and attacked the car and he was without doubt probably the most violent man I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Um, in, the, in the blue, I ended up with a shattered Achilles and I broke my wrist. Um, I've got hip bone in the wrist and I've had four surgeries on the Achilles and seven hospital stays altogether. Because of that blue? Because of that blue. Jeez. And uh, I put the members in for a, uh, a bravery award. Yeah. Uh, for stopping the murder with 10 minutes notice. And for the fight, and we we got the gun off him, mm. um, and I was going to shoot him. Just a really evil, violent bloke who. Uh, well, I had my gun out, and I was going to shoot him, and I yeah. probably to this day yeah. regret not shooting him because he will kill someone one day. Yeah, and I'll always remember his name, and I know that 
But I put the members in for a, a commendation or a bravery award of some description and a superintendent that ended up getting it decided that it was more important that I be considered as having done the wrong thing as the detective sergeant because I didn't get the special operations group or the cert team from Melbourne to go to Geelong and take over the job. Now, I don't know how they were going to get there in 10 minutes, mm. but they weren't, is the answer. We did what we could do, as good as we could do it, and that's how I find the police force today, mate. Tied up with people doing far too many things that they really shouldn't be sticking their nose in, mm. and there's too much hard work that needs doing. Mm. and it's not getting done. Spot on. We'll just have a short break, Robbo, but no, he's spot on, isn't he? He's, um, you know, there's too many uh, critics and, uh, and fault finders and blamers, but, um, you know, he's so right. We'll be back shortly. Paul Robson's on the couch. Uh, um, 30 years of um, hard-hitting policing and uh, a very, very successful policeman. Left because he was suffering and uh, hit rock bottom. Uh, Robbo, um, sometimes it's important to hit rock bottom before we can rebuild, isn't it? For me it was. And I think anybody that's wavering needs to feel their feet on the ground and for me that's when you feel your feet on the ground when you hit that bottom you have to stand up yeah and for me my feet hit the ground when as i said my ex-wife was going to leave with the kids and and i i would only say rightly so i i, I couldn't have coped if the shoe was on the other foot and uh she was going to leave and because of that that shocked me into rehab mm. and i shared a rehab with a vietnam vet drug user who unfortunately passed away last year but uh, rehab's not where you want to be as a copper it's a uh, it's a terrible place and I did all the things that you do in rehab cried and vomited and uh, wouldn't leave the room and then wouldn't go in the room and had counselling and lived on Valium and uh, it was only that I was at rock bottom that I was able to say that today I've got 17 years sobriety behind me mm. because when I hit rock bottom, I stood up and I've been supported by a sensational sponsor uh, who is like a father to me. He knows that uh, without him, I pr probably wouldn't have lasted 17 days, let alone 17 years. And that 17 years sees me now I don't have liqueur chocolates, I don't cook with wine, nothing. And it's because people supported me mm. that I'm able to offer support to others. Congratulations, Robbo. And, and that's tough-minded optimism. Uh, what about the people suffering tonight who are thinking of maybe having an early departure mm. by suicide? What's it, what advice can you give to those people? And I know a lot of people say, ring your friends and that, but when you're... In that mindset, you don't want to ring anybody. You go underground. No. Look, uh, well, I've been there, uh, and suicide is not a, an ending of suffering. It's the beginning of other people's suffering. It's suffering by your family. It's suffering by your friends. It's suffering by your neighbours. Uh, it's suffering by those that you may have worked with. Uh, I know I've lost a lot of friends to suicide over the years. Uh, some fantastic coppers and some fantastic friends from sobriety days. And when you hit that rock bottom and you think that it's time to check out, it's time that you looked for help. And it's time that you asked people like me. Uh, it's a time that you honestly accepted that there are times when you have to say, this is of my doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to accept responsibility. Mm. That's a hard thing to do. Mm. 
sometimes it's when others really put it on you as was my case it was put to me that uh, things were going to change dramatically in my life that I had to accept it was my fault uh, and incidentally with my drinking and with my sobriety I never asked the police force for assent I put myself into rehab I took recreation leave to go into rehab uh, I never claimed one cent of sick leave. I never uh, asked anyone to pay a bill for me. Uh, everything that happened with me with sobriety was uh, paid for by me and my family. Robbo, it, we've had so many decent fellas on the couch. There seems to be that um, that um, theme that once you're suffering and going through some issues, um, the police force is not there to help enough. I didn't find that they were there to help enough. Uh, they were certainly there and ready to send me off uh, and to bring my career to a close. I was lucky that I had a commander who was just a really good bloke mm -hmm. as much as anything else. And uh, he was the reason that in the end I decided that I would retire before mm -hmm. I was forced out. But I think there's a genuine... And I, look, I, I know that they've recently announced their uh, mental health plan. Um, but I think... No, I know there's a genuine disconnect between sick and suffering members and sick and suffering ex-members and command. That is so true, Robbo. And uh, you've got so much life experience now. I heard you've done a, a bit of corporate speaking and you do a great job at it as well. Look, I, and it's something that... Uh, I love to do. It's something that I think it, I find is my today's calling. Mm. Uh, I'm 50 years of age. Mm -hmm. I uh, spent 30 years in the police force mm. and I've got a lot of sobriety behind me now, but unfortunately that sobriety is worth nothing if I pick up a drink tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I know that it's one day at a time mm. and that's the message that I take to people. And I, uh, I'm available for corporate speaking uh, at the drop of a hat, uh, so long as the diary allows it. How can people contact you? But through my website, uh, through my email address rather, uh, all lowercase, robson67 at outlook.com.au. Mm. And bearing in mind that I don't pull any punches, I tell my story as it is. I do drug and alcohol in the workplace and I do stress in the workplace, having had PTSD and mm. suffering still with PTSD. But I'm also, when I do these talks, I provide everyone at the talk with my details and my contact details, and they can rest assured that should they, anyone in that room contact me, they contact me anonymously. Mm -hmm. I don't then ring up the boss and say, yeah, one of your staff is uh, struggling with the grog. And sometimes the person that's struggling with the grog isn't the person at work, but they've got a person at home that's drinking themselves to death, and that makes your job all the harder. Mm, and, that's a great uh, support role, Robbo. That's that's amazing, Robbo. We sometimes when we go through difficult times, we think we're the only ones suffering. But just to finish off the interview, we all suffer, don't we? Look, suffering is something that I learnt in early days, uh, and is one of the reasons that I took up uh, a, a conversion to Buddhism. And with Buddhism, I learnt that nothing is permanent. Poverty, wealth, happiness, sadness. Nothing is permanent, and it's really important that people realise that when things are at their worst, they can only improve. Amazing. Can I say one last thing? Of course. You're a terrific fella. Thanks for coming on the show, mate. You really are. Good on you, Mick. Good on you, and thanks very much. Can I say one last thing? You're a beautiful audience. Love and best wishes. Good night. Good night.